Today, we'll be introducing anger management and some of the most basic concepts. To begin, I want to say that anger in and of itself is not bad or negative. Anger is a natural human emotion that we have, and it has its purposes. But when we get involved in anger management, generally, it's not because we get angry, because, again, it's a natural human emotion. We get involved or are ordered to complete anger management when we don't respond to anger appropriately, when we decide to act out aggressively. So, first of all, it's important for us to understand uh, three words associated with anger that are sometimes used interchangeably. Anger, aggression, and hostility. So when we're talking anger, anger, again, is just the emotional experience. Aggression is the behavior that we have um, after becoming angry. And in fact, you can actually be aggressive if you're not even angry, right? So one example that's used in, in one of the books that I, I use for anger management is they use the example of a hitman, let's say, who obviously, you know, we know what a hitman does. And, um, and a lot of the things that they do, they're not necessarily angry when they do it. It's simply a job. They're completing a job. So they're not angry with the person, don't necessarily have any uh, ill feelings towards the person but they're gonna complete the job in order to get money. Um, so when we talk anger, again, it's an emotion. Uh, aggression is the behavior. Now, aggression is what we face consequences for because it's the action. It's what we end up going to court, facing sentences when we get aggressive with people, right? So the aggression can be verbal or it can be physical, right? Physical aggression such as punching, hitting, stabbing, shooting someone, uh, verbal aggression, yelling, using profanity, calling someone out of their name, um, threatening the individual. These are examples of verbal aggression. Now, hostility, on the other hand, I like to explain hostility as a attitude rather than a behavior. So again, anger being an emotion, right, of something that we feel, and aggression being a behavior, so our actions, and hostility is an attitude. So the example that I like to use when I'm talking hostility and an attitude and to distinguish it from anger, uh, I like to use the example of um, race and gangs, for example. Right. So when a person is uh, begin their career in a gang, if you want to call it a career, um, one of the first things you're taught are who your enemies are. Right. So you'll have someone, generally an older um, friend or associate from the gang, and they will teach you who you get along with and who you don't get along with. Over time, you begin to develop a certain attitude towards those people who you were told that you do not get along with, right? And that's the hostility. So you're taught that, uh, you know, we don't get along with this group. And sometimes you may or may not be told why, right? But you're told you don't get along with them. And because you're a part of that organization, you know, you're going to follow that organization's rules. So you begin to develop this attitude towards these people. And any time that you see uh, someone from your enemy area or neighborhood, you become angry and you want to act out aggressively against them, right? So we end up having all three, the anger, aggression, and the hostility involved in there. So again, the hostility is just the attitude. You may have a attitude towards someone and not necessarily be angry with them. 
you know, why should you? They haven't necessarily did to anything to you personally. So the same as the, the situation with race, when we're talking about race, um, people also develop a hostile attitude towards uh, people from, you know, a particular race that they don't like, or maybe they were brought up, you know, maybe they had a family that didn't like a particular race or ethnic group. So they're taught like, hey, these people are bad. They do bad things. You know, they harm people. And, you know, we see a lot of it in the news. And right now where um, people are grooming children at very young age, ages to um, not like people who happen to be another race or happen to have another uh, perspective. So the reason that it's, under, it's important to understand hostility is, again, because it will determine how quickly I become angry with a particular person. So, again, if the person is from uh, an enemy neighborhood or enemy gang, um, then I'm going to become angry with them due to their provocative act faster than I would anyone else whether it be my own associates or friends or family and such. The same thing with the, from a racial perspective, where if I grown up and developed a hostile attitude due to my upbringing, uh, due to the people that I chose to associate myself with or what have you, and I developed this hostile attitude towards them, then my interpretation of their actions are generally going to be towards the negative. No matter what they say or do, I'm generally going to interpret it in the most negative way. And that interpretation is important, right? Because when we get angry, it is not the provocative event that gets us upset. It's our interpretation about the event that gets us upset. And that's important to understand. This is a concept that I did not understand as a youth. I constantly uh, would get in trouble and with different situations. I remember even being in like juvenile hall and juvenile placement and I would get into a situation and the staff or the counselors would say, hey, you know, why, why did you do that? You know, why would you hit this person? And I would say something to the effect of they made me angry. They pissed me off. And, and I remember they would always say, hey, you know what? No one can piss you off. You only piss yourself off. And oh my goodness, that would get me, I would get so upset about that. But now I understand that they were correct, right? So it's not that the person pissed me off. It was my interpretation about what they did that got me upset. So either I felt that the person did um, their actions intentionally, they did it to disrespect me or to try to shame me in some type of way. So I felt that I had to respond to that situation because anger, again, in and of itself is not bad. Anger is something that's natural and sometimes necessary, right? It protects us. It helps us against feeling vulnerable. And generally when we uh, get angry, it's a good idea to, to at least look at our other feelings and see, okay, how was I feeling um, before I became angry or even before the provocative event occurred, right? Because our feelings will make a difference um, in how fast we become angry. So if I feel afraid, if I feel lonely, if I feel abandoned, if I feel, uh, you know, disrespected or what have you, then it's more likely that I'm going to become angry very quickly, right? Because anger itself is a secondary emotion even though it may be the most intense in, in, in a lot of situations, you know, and a lot of people will say whenever they hear anger described as secondary emotion, they say, well, how is it that anger is a secondary emotion? You know, for me, it's primary, right? And I would have said the same thing, but no, it, it's secondary because we usually are triggered by those other emotions as well as our thoughts, right? We have these triggered thoughts that we have which are based on our interpretation of the provocative event. So these are 
very important ideas for us to understand as we begin to step into anger management and uh, learn how to manage our anger in a good way um, and hopefully um, help us to improve our life, our situation, our employment opportunities, our uh, networking opportunities with other people. Because, I mean, it's very hard to network um, with people when you are always reacting to situations aggressively, right? So again, it's not a case that you can't become angry, right? It's a case of you deal with the anger properly so you don't act out in aggression. You use assertiveness, which is another topic that we'll talk about. So, and I plan to take these videos and make them relatively short um, and we'll talk about different topics um, kind of isolate different concepts and discuss them over time. Um, I may even make one extremely long video and then break it up into pieces and then label them as parts one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Um, so anyway, this is our introduction.